moving right along. Independence. Ivory Coast, June 1960. They are led by a benevolent dictator called Felix Hufwe Boigny. He was considered the Jomo Kenyatta of, of uh, Francophone Africa. Uh, benevolent dictator. He um, led his country quite well, if you will. Uh, for the first, well, from 1960 until his death in 1994, if I'm not mistaken. So, in between, the country was prospering. In fact, Abidjan, the capital of Ivory Coast, was known as Le Petit Paris, or Little Paris, because the folks there considered themselves literally more French than the French. In fact, even their currency to this day is pegged on the euro. Before, it was the franc as in the, French, the former French colony, today it's pegged to the euro. So some, by the way, who, Felix Houphouet boigny was a Muslim from the north of, no, he was, let's see, yeah, he, Boigny. Anyway, here's the deal. So he, he came from the north of the country. So he must have been Muslim, yeah. And uh, he, he really unified the country really well. And then one day he had this epiphany, if you will. He decided to build a basilica in the country's administrative capital, which is called Yamusukro. Yamusukro is about 250 kilometers north of Abidjan. So he built this basilica in the middle of the jungle, 250 kilometers north of Abidjan. And it, construction began in about 1989. By 1993, it was finished. Back then, it cost the country something like 300 million euros. And when this thing was completed, it was two and a half times the size of the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. They called this one the uh, Notre Dame de la Paix, Our Lady of Mercy, Our Lady of Peace, they called it in uh, Yamusukru. So they build it. The Pope shows up for the official opening. And by the way, inside this basilica, which is two and a half times the one in Rome, the, uh, you can fit in 20,000 people inside the basilica and outside another 100,000 people. On the day the Pope arrived to officially uh, consecrate and open this basilica, the place was packed, packed, packed. First time ever it was packed. This was 1993. It was officially opened. The, ne the following year, Felix Houphouet Boigny, the country's first president, dies and the mass is held in this basilica again world heads of state dignitaries you know, ordinary ivorians you name it pack pack packed so several years later and we've all heard about this basilica and i'm wondering i need to go visit so we drive from abidjan to yamusukru took about two and a half hours we got there as you're driving into the city of yamusukru the highways are huge it's like six eight lane highways and as you're driving in, you see this monstrosity in front of you, literally a golden uh, dome shining in the uh, morning light. And as you drive closer, you see the extent, the, 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 the size of this basilica. Notre Dame de la Paix. So we went there and we wanted to film. And we asked the uh, <coughs> local priest to give us permission to do that. And, he's, and this happened to be a Saturday. He said, look, why don't you come for Mass tomorrow? And we did the next day. We filmed. Incredible. I mean, the maintenance of this basilica is still done by the Vatican to this day. So maintenance is incredible. Manicured lawns inside is pristine. But there were only something like a thousand people there that day. A thousand people, because you also have to remember that in the north of Abidjan, it's literally, it's all Islam. They're all Muslims up in the north where Hufwe Bwanyi put this structure. So very few Christians up there. And when mass is held, as it is every Sunday, not that many people showed up. And we wondered, what was this about? Why, why would he do this here and not in Abidjan? And they said, well, this is where he came from. This is his gift to the Catholic Church, this basilica. If you visit Abidjan today and drive up to Yamusukru, it's still there. It's still operational. It's still pretty, you know, incredible sight.
but you wonder who or what was he thinking when he put this huge, huge structure in the middle, literally in the middle of nowhere. And then as we were getting ready to leave, we also understood that in his castle, Okwebwanyi had a castle right near the, his basilica, and a moat, a moat uh, running, or rather a moat circling the entire castle. And in this river, in this man-made river, he had some crocodiles. In fact, that's what he was known as. Hufwe Bwanyi was known as the crocodile. So he had crocodiles just in case anyone planned to invade his castle. And every day at mid-morning and mid-afternoon, tourists can actually visit this place, this moat, this river, and th throw live uh, chickens into the river where the crocodiles come. If you want to see the crocodiles come out, you can buy a chicken right there next door. There's a vendor there selling chickens and you toss them into this man-made uh, moat and the crocodiles, you should see the way they come out. It is scary to say the least. It's even more scary when you see the chickens scampering as they, as they try to escape from one crocodile snap to another and before you know it, kaboom! gone one time we were filming and uh, some guy actually bought a goat and tossed it into the river and i'm telling you nyama choma never looks so terrible and that <laughs> you can't make this stuff up it's the hot breakfast with jeff and jelano